welcome to worship on the water this third Sunday of Advent. It is like night and day what the weather was last week at this time and what it is now. We were all bundled and now it almost feels like we need to uh, we need to take our take our scarves off. But we are so glad that you are here worshiping with us. If we haven't met, my name is Christina and I'm one of the pastors here at Wrightsville along with Doug Lane, our senior pastor over here worshiping with us tonight. And along with Carrie and Nick Lober and Justin Lacey, we lead uh, Worship on the Water here every Sunday at 4 p.m. And so we have a couple of announcements before we get officially started with our worship. One is that this next week at this time, we will not be having Worship on the Water because we want you to come out an hour later for Journey to the Manger. Um, we have folks that are working so hard on this, our children's and youth folks music folks and we think that you will enjoy having this drive-through uh, worship experience we originally planned it for Christmas Eve, but it is going to be on the 20th instead. So you can basically just line up. I think Doug's going to be greeting us, and you're going to see prophets and angels. You're going to hear music and experience the Christmas story in a new way. And so we hope that you will come next Sunday from 5 to 7. And while you're doing that, we hope that you will bring some donations of warm clothing for uh, for our mission project. We're, those are going to be given to folks like the Help Hub and Snipes Academy and Walking Tall Wilmington. And so we're especially in need of scarves, um, warm gloves, especially for people who are homeless, um, all sizes, um, warm sweaters, hot hands, any, any of those sorts of things. And we're going to be giving those out. Hi there. We also encourage you to tune in to our Christmas Eve service that's going to be online on Christmas Eve and also a blue Christmas service, which is going to be on the 21st, which is the longest night of the year. The days are getting kind of short, if you haven't noticed. And so I know that that can bring up many emotions for us, especially if we have lost someone or lost something. And this year, it feels like we've all kind of lost something. So there'll be a short video service for that. And there's going to be a pastor to pray with. If you'd like to pray with someone in person at the church from 4 to 6 p.m. Or if you'd like to pray with someone one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom, then a pastor will also be available there for, for prayer as well. And now I just invite you to maybe turn to someone around you and to wave and pass the peace of Christ. Say the peace of Christ be with you. And I invite you maybe to take a breath in in this cathedral of God's creation. And let's pray. Oh God, our Savior, the one who brings us joy and hope, peace and love, we thank you for this Advent season. We thank you for even for the waiting that helps us to prepare ourselves for you. God, we pray that you would speak to us in these next few minutes and that you would help us to hear your song, your invitation, your good news with new ears. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.
from Luke chapter 1, verse 39. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. that we get to celebrate here together and hear some of those favorite Advent and Christmas hymns. And we're gonna be hearing one that has specifically to do with Mary's song a little bit, a little bit later. This um, is, this message is more like a, it's more like a dramatic reading from Mary's perspective. So if you hear me saying I, I don't mean I, Christina, you'll f find that out soon. Uh, you mean I, Mary. And it's sort of not only this song, but it is the whole, kind of the whole Christmas story from Mary's perspective. Um, and Mary actually says a lot more in the Christmas story than Joseph. 
and does. Um, and so it's really interesting that a lot of times we talk about Mary and we sing about Mary and we may not listen to what Mary actually says. And so while this isn't what she actually said, maybe it was something to do with how she might have thought. So let's pray. Oh God, we pray that you would speak to us your good news, your good tidings of great joy. God, that you would be with us in our speaking and in our listening. And may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of each and every heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O oh God, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. You'd think that I would remember certain things, right? Over the years, I've tried to remember what I was doing when that messenger of God came to me. And that's what angel means, right? Messenger. Was I washing the dishes? Did I shatter the cup that I was washing and just see it shatter into a hundred pieces? Was I doing the laundry, <laughs> taking the sheets down from the line where they had been airing out, getting ready to make our beds? Or was I just lying in bed, daydreaming about being anywhere but Nazareth? Nazareth is kind of a hole. It's, it's a nice place to live, but you wouldn't want to visit there. Well, I can't remember what I was doing when heaven broke in. Just that those angels are not like what your children dress up in those Christmas plays. Isn't that what they call it? Christmas? I never thought that giving birth would have a special holiday to go with it, but what do you know? Angels, it turns out, don't have cute little satin tunics and fluffy wings and cute little tinsel halos. He was terrifying, this man, this angel, Gabriel, red eyes glowing like the sun. Over a cup of tea at the breakfast table a couple months later, Joseph would tell me that an angel was what made him believe too. Although I teased him that his angel was just an angel in a dream. Mine was an angel for real, so, you know. Was he different, Jesus, people would always ask? Was he different than a regular baby? I don't know what a regular baby is, I would tell them. I didn't have much to compare him to, to be honest. He was my oldest, after all. I remember the first time I felt him move, the first time he kicked my oldest. And I was about 14 years old, if I was a day. I love the way they wrote it in the Bible that they wrote down. Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. Of course I treasured them, but doesn't every mother do that? Don't all of us take that first little lock of hair that's cut at the barbershop, that imprint of the tiny little foot in the clay? Don't all of us remember the first word that said, Dada, usually, instead of Mama? But I did treasure these things. All of them, the angels, and the visit to old cousin Elizabeth, although she doesn't like it when I call her old. Respect your elders, Mary, she says. I treasured all these things, and I pondered them, and I thought, what do I know about God now that I didn't know before? Every experience will teach you something different about God. God never changes, you see, but your understanding of God does. You understand God a little bit better with every experience. You know God just a little bit more. It's like when the wind blows away the storm clouds and shows you the clear blue sky. And so 14 and a virgin and pregnant, I learned this about God, that God is not the God of the rich and the mighty and the powerful people. And if God plays favorites, honestly, God plays favorites towards this poor name, poor no name girl in Galilee. I wrote a song about it. It's sort of what the women of my people do. Hannah, who was the mother of the prophet Samuel, who had a baby after undergoing all sorts of years of infertility, she did it. She wrote a song, mine is maybe a remix, she might say. Miriam, who was the sister of Moses, who watched God open up the Red Sea so the people of Israel could pass through and then close it up before the Egyptians could attack them. The Bible says that Miriam played with her tambourine and you gotta love a woman who runs away from slavery in the middle of the night and remembers to bring her tambourine. This is the way my song went. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. The lowliness of his servant? Rude, I might say. Someone would say it this way, would paraphrase it. I'm bursting with God news. I'm dancing the song of my savior. 
God took one good look at me and look what happened. I'm the most fortunate woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. The God whose very name is wholly set apart from all others. His mercy flows in wave after wave on those who are in awe before him. He knocked rulers off their high horses and pulled us victims out of the mud. And the starving poor sat down to a banquet and the callous rich were let out in the cult. It's not bad. You know, it didn't exactly go myrrh on the charts, let alone gold or frankincense, but it's not too shabby if I do say so myself. See, this thing about me having this baby, the baby who would be the savior of the world, it wasn't just about me. It was about all of us, poor people who nobody's ever written a song about, let alone listen to the songs that we sing. It's about the fact that maybe we're a little bit of God's favorites. And even if he's not, even if we're not his favorites, he sees us every moment. God lifts up peasants and sends away the rich and sends a banquet table for people who are starving. God turns the world upside down. I'd like to clear up some misconceptions. One, I did not have blue eyes or blonde hair. Two, I did not want a drummer boy, little or otherwise, to wake up my baby who had finally, finally gotten to sleep with all of these animals around. Three, don't let anybody tell you it was a silent night because the little Lord Jesus made plenty of crying. He was a real human baby after all. He wasn't some sort of figment of our imagination. I kept looking at him, trying to decide if he looked different. Different than what? What was I expecting? A halo, a glowing spotlight on this kid? Of, you know, choir? Every child is a miracle, but this one was more so. He was the son of God. We gave him that name, the name that the terrifying, glowing, red-eyed angel told us to call him Jesus, which meant that he would save his people from their sins. And then all of these people came, shepherds and kings. Who was God to us then? God was someone who tweeted out and put out press releases to shepherds, poor workers who were out on the field working the graveyard shift. God was someone we could not comprehend and yet he was someone we could hold. God was not ashamed to be born as a tiny child in a barn. God was just like any one of us, a baby who kept me up all night with his crying until Joseph held him and rocked him so I could get some sleep. God was Emmanuel, God with us. And then at the end of this whole crazy thing, there was another angel, another terrifying glowing being with that crazy hair telling us to run. There is a reason why they always start with do not be afraid. You have 14 years of your life with no angels and then it is angels, angels everywhere. Here is the thing about mamas. We don't run unless someone tells us to. You don't travel when you're pregnant with a kid and you don't travel when you've got a toddler if you have any choice about it. Terrible twos, three nagers, it is no joke. We have been huddling down in Bethlehem for a couple of years in Joseph's ancestral land. And aside from that day when the shepherds ran in and told the story about angels again, we had had kind of a normal life. Joseph was a carpenter and you know, there's lots of things to carpet all the time, job security. We had made a quiet little life, just the three of us. And then when I treasured those things and pondered them, I wondered, had anything really even happened? The angels and the shepherds and the visions? The little Lord Jesus had developed the unfortunate habit of flinging all of his milk and honey all over the walls and all over himself and all over all of the clothes that I was constantly washing and all of those handmade tables that Joseph had made. But then all of a sudden, someone warns me that these wise men are coming. Foreigners with thick accents they're, you know, astrologers dressed in silk and fabric that it would take probably 10 years of Joseph's salary to buy. They're not from around here, someone whispered. They wanna see the baby. The baby Jesus had all of his spit and milk and honey all over his swaddling clothes. So this was not an excellent time for visitors, but I gasped when I saw them. I had never seen anything like them. Crowns and robes of fine fabric, silk and purple linen. And they knelt down 
before the toddler with the spit up all over him and they said that they had been watching the skies for years and they had traveled hundreds of miles to see us. They brought us gifts that were strange gifts for a baby, I'll admit. You could use a few extra swaddling clothes or a couple nights of babysitting or a rocker, but maybe not gold and myrrh and whatever frankincense was. But things can change in your life in a moment. We had known that Herod was not the most even healed of kings, but even then, nobody thought he could be so cruel. And so the icing on the cake in this whole weird miraculous affair was the fact that we were told to go to Egypt, the place where our people did not like to talk about. Egypt, the place where my people were slaves for hundreds of years. But you know what? God brought us there. God brought us back. God was with us on the road to Bethlehem where maybe there was a donkey, but I also probably walked quite a bit very, very pregnant with my ankles swelled, my feet swelled, my back hurting, ready for a break. God was with us when those kings, those rich men from afar came to see this little baby. God was with me, saw me. That's who God is. And so my friends, who is the God that you worship? God never changes, but our understanding of his, him does. Sometimes you see the clear blue sky and sometimes it's foggy or raining. You see, my story, this story is not just for children and it's not just for people who feel joyful. It's for grown-ups too, for the people who are bullied or the people who are crying, the people who are far from home, the immigrant or the refugee, people like us. Christmas is for us people who never thought that we would be worthy of a vision or an angel. And honestly, we could do without it. Christmas is for the people that just need everything to get back to normal. Who is your God? Is he Jesus, the one who will save his people from his sins? Is he the God who travels on the road with you when you are fleeing to a place you never thought you'd go? Is he Emmanuel? God with us. He saw me. Does he see you? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who
um, but our church family lost um, Bob Brandt uh, this week and also Vesta Burroughs, um, two longtime members of our congregation. And so we ask your prayers for their families this Christmas season and also for all of those who have an empty chair around their tables. Um, our prayers also go out to, is it Asbury United Methodist Church in D.C., Doug? Um, a church um, in D.C., one of our United Methodist congregations who had over um, over the last couple days had one of their banners on their church property that was a racial justice banner taken down and burned on video and put on the internet. And um, we send our prayers to those churches and all of those who live in um for, for whom that is something that is scary and maybe reminiscent of times gone by. Let's go ahead and pray. Oh God, who sees? Oh God, who knows? Oh God, who calls us to not be afraid, but to fear not. Lord, as the days grow colder, as the nights grow dark around us, Sometimes it is hard for us to find joy. Sometimes it's hard for us to treasure these things and ponder your works, your mercies in our hearts. Sometimes, God, it's hard for us even to see them. Lord, the world is strange right now and it seems like we could use a couple angels. We could use you coming down like you did back in Mary's day. We pray, come Lord Jesus. God, we pray that you would heal our broken world, that you would heal our hearts that grieve, that you would heal our spirits, our nation, all of creation. Lord God, we thank you for your mercies that are new every morning, that you see us and that you also see the people that sometimes are invisible to us the Marys and the Josephs, the Elizabeths and the Shepherds. God, we pray that you would open our hearts, that you open our eyes to see all of those who maybe we have made invisible or whose sufferings have been invisible to us. God, we lift up all of those who we love, all of those things that need your mercy. We pray that you would be Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, as we walk towards Bethlehem, as we walk towards Christmas, give us joy that doesn't make sense. Give us peace that passes understanding. Give us hope that hopes despite the circumstances. And above all, give us love, the love that your son Jesus showed us and taught us just like he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, sia santificato il tuo nome. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul.
And so we would love to see y'all not back this next week. We'll see you for Journey in the Manger to the Manger, but then we'll see you back here hopefully in two weeks and then just, you know, continue it on. And we also, as we move into the new year, would love to have some help making Worship on the Water happen. And so if you maybe uh, would be able to come a little early and help us set up things like signs, carry stuff over, um, give folks a mask as they come in or if you're able to do things like tear all that stuff down and do it in reverse um just takes a couple minutes and so if you would like to be added to a schedule or help us out with that just let me know and we would love uh, we would love to do that because we are just kind of loving being out here with all of our friends so friends receive this blessing may the god of mary who saw mary as young as she was and as poor as she was and as maybe invisible to some people as she was. May God also see you and may God give you eyes to see all the people that might be invisible to you. May God comfort you when you feel afflicted and when you're a little bit too comfortable with the way the world is, may God afflict you with holy discomfort. And may you go in peace. And we will hopefully see you back next Sunday at 5 o'clock um, for a journey to the major. Go in peace, friends. <laughs>